We're lucky in the maritime Northwest. Our mild climate allows us to grow many kinds of trees. But the big selection can be daunting, however, to find the right tree, especially for the small home garden. So to make it easier, we've selected five great trees for Kitsap Gardens. So Jim, these are taken from a larger list of trees put together by the Paulsbo Tree Board. How many trees are on that big list? Well, Colleen, it's a big list. 51 trees on the list uh, shown by their common name and their scientific name. The guide also shows their mature height and width, uh, as well as preferred orientation, sun orientation, and soil type. The uh, guide is really just a starting point uh, for uh, your study, for more research, or for questions for your nursery person. Right. Well, it was hard to narrow it down to five, but we chose two evergreen trees and three deciduous trees. Why might someone want an evergreen versus a tree that loses its leaves, Jim? Well, we know that the evergreen trees do a better job of sequestering uh, CO2. However, deciduous trees offer some benefits, like the leaves uh, shading your house from the summer sun, and in the winter, without leaves on the trees, the sun entering your windows. Deciduous trees also provide more color in your garden. They attract uh, wildlife. The evergreen trees uh, are harder to find in a tree-like appearance because most of their smaller cultivars are shrub-like or multi-stemmed. If you have a big yard, evergreen trees are beautiful. Before we jump into our list, I think it's important to note that we had robust debates, right, <laughs> yes, on do. what trees to include, and no two horticulturists are going to say are going to choose the same top five, and no two garden situations call for the same tree. So, with that said, with that caveat, take it away, Jim. The first tree, in no per order of preference, uh, is the weeping Alaskan cedar. Uh, it's cultivar Green Arrow. Green Arrow is a cultivar of a Pacific Northwest native with a wonderful texture and a pointed arrow-like shape. It likes sun to part shade, is um, pretty tolerant of most soils, uh, and is drought tolerant uh, when established, which is really important with our new drier summers. Well, I like that choice because it has a very unique and graceful shape. Mm -hmm. uh, what's next? Well, the next one is the Hinoki cypress. It's cultivar gracilis, and uh, gracilis is evergreen. It has a slow but behaved uh, habitat of growing in a pyramidal shape, which needs little or no pruning. The gracilis grows to about 20 feet in height, uh, but is slender to about four feet so it really fits in tight spaces. It also is a sun and part shade and shade, so it's not fussy about where it's growing. That's nice. And uh, it's quite drought tolerant. I think it's pr particularly useful in the garden for screening purposes, yes. and also it can be used as a specimen tree too, so pretty versatile. What's next? Well, the next one is a deciduous tree. It's the Japanese Stewardia. And the Japanese Stewardia is an all-season tree. Its summer foliage is green, but its uh, fall foliage is uh, orange, uh, red, uh, burgundy. It has beautiful bark. Yes. Uh, it has white flowers all summer long, but needs full sun here in the Pacific Northwest okay. to uh, really flower properly. It prefers uh, moist uh, soils, and so uh, it's not as drought tolerant as the others. Okay. Well, what I like the best about Stewardia is how it attracts pollinators. It does. Yeah. And that tree, like our next tree, is one of my favorites uh, because it has all season interests like the Stewardia does. Right. The next one, next tree, is the Carnelian cherry, again deciduous. Its property of having flowers in the winter, beautiful yellow blossoms on bare branches. Its summer color is a red a fruit that ripens in the late summer. It's a real attractor for songbirds and other wildlife. Uh, it too has exfoliating mottled bark, beautiful. Uh, 
It uh, takes uh, sun to part shade and uh, a variety of soil types and is quite drought tolerant once it's um, been established. Well, right now, Cornelian cherry's blooming, so February, March, and when it blooms, it really stands out in the landscape when there's few things that have leaves or flowers for that matter. So wow. this next one, you fought hard for the inclusion of this one in our list, so I think it's your favorite. Oh, yes, I did, Colleen. It's the Japanese maple. Yes. And the Japanese maple has spectacular color, fall color, and form. It's a long-lived tree, will adapt to most soil types except for heavy clay. It is, it, it's hard to describe because it has a variety of colors. It has a variety of branch types, a variety of leaf types. It shows a tolerance between sun and shade, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful though when you're selecting it. And the best time to select it is in the fall when it's showing its real uh, fall color. Uh, and that's also the best time to plant because the winter rains water its new roots. Right. Well, it sounds like with a variety of different shapes and forms and sizes of the Japanese maple, that's one that you have to really do your research on to make sure you're getting one that's, that's what you want, right? You do, yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you, Jim. The BCAP viewers can find the Big Tree List at the Paulsbo Tree Board's website, but we also like the Great Plant Picks and the WSU Kitsap Master Gardeners websites.